Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 71st Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Today we're going to be covering UDP sockets. So we're going to say uh, my UDP test, and just throw this in the usual location wherever you're putting your projects. Next, next, finish, finish. And I have to apologize if you hear some noise in the background. My my kitten seems to think that my blinds are new toys, so as much as I try to keep him away from him, he just really, really wants to play with them. All right, let's save that. Now, um, if you've been watching the TCP tutorials, you should know that this is going to be much, much easier. First off, what is UDP? Well, UDP is the exact opposite of uh, TCP. Let me get this class built here. Having some technical difficulties. Thank you, kitten. All right, so let's actually include it. QDP socket. And then let's look this up in help, just so we can really quickly see what we're working with here. The QUDP class reference. If you read the class description, it says that the UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, is a lightweight, unreliable, datagram-oriented, connectionless protocol. What in the world does all that mean? Well, it means you send very small, very fast packets. It's unreliable because there's no th three-way TCP handshake. So you quite literally send your message out into the void that you call your network, and you have no idea if the end user ever got it. Well, that's kind of silly. Why would you use something like that? Well, UDP is incredibly fast. It's much faster than TCP simply because it describes you need small packets and there's no three-way handshake overhead. So you can just whip these out. Typically with UDP, you'll do things like uh, multicast and broadcast where you'll send uh, a packet out onto the network and you'll send it to the broadcast address and it'll just go everywhere. Or you'll use it to do things like ping. We've pinged servers before. That's actually a UDP packet. So we are going to do a very uh, kind of slim down client server all in one thingy just to kind of show you how this class works. And this is probably going to be the first and last video we're going to cover with uh, UDP simply because it's not really used that much. I mean, uh, it is used, but most everything out there is TCP. And then. Uh, Oops, that's a slot, not a signal. What am I thinking here? Ready read should look familiar for you if you've been following the TCP tutorials. And then for our private, we're just going to make a private variable here called QUDP socket. Yeah, we'll call it socket here. So we have to implement really two things here say hello and ready read. So let's grab that, save that. little copy and paste magic here. Uh oh. I can hear in the background my other cat sees that I'm on the computer and now suddenly wants my attention. Hey kitty. Hold on guys. I'm sorry. I have to pause the video. I've got to pet the kitten. Okay. Sorry about that. For some reason I am just invisible to this cat until I start working on something and then oh my gosh she wants my attention. So we'll say socket equal new QUDP socket. We'll give it the parent of this. And this next part's going to take a little bit of explanation. If I can spell socket correctly. What we need to do with the UDP socket is actually bind it to an address and a port. Remember, you can have multiple addresses and multiple ports. So what you want to do is bind it to a specific address and a specific port. So we'll say Q host address, and we're just going to say localhost. Um, localhost is the equivalent of 127001. And we're going to do port 1234. Now we need to connect our signals and slots. And I'll say socket, signal, ready read, and our slot's going to be this, ready read very simple, very easy. Just doing that when we create the class. And then we want a uh, 
a function here where we can quite literally just spit out some data. So we're going to say Q byte array, and this would be your datagram. We're just going to call it data. And then data append, and we're just going to say hello from UDP land. Maybe if I could spell from. My spelling's atrocious in these videos. I'm sorry about that. Now what we want to do is actually write the datagram out to the socket. So we'll say socket, write datagram, and uh, you notice how we've got a couple properties we have to fill in here. Well, you have to say the datagram, and then you have to say where are you sending it to. Because remember, you don't have a connection. So you can send this to just about anywhere. So we'll say Q host address, localhost, you know, our local loopback, port 1234. And that's all you need to really send data. Now you should know, if you want to broadcast something, you could really say, like, uh, we'll say my IP address is 192.168.1.10. You could uh, do what's called a broadcast address, 192.168.1.255. That will send it to pretty much everything out on your local subnet, if you know anything about subnetting. So before I get some some emails about how do you broadcast, that's really how you do it. You just send it to your broadcast address, which is in 255. All right, now that we're sending something, we need to know when that data comes in. We've got our signals and slots hooked up. So when data comes in, ready read is going to get fired off here. So we got to say Q byte array, and we'll just call this buffer. And we need to resize this depending on what the size of the pending datagram is. That way we don't lose information. So we'll say buffer resize. And you notice how now it wants a size. Well, we can just say socket pending datagram size. And that's how you get the size of the datagram sitting in the socket waiting to be read. Now we just need a couple variables here. We'll say Q host address. And we're going to say uh, sender. And we want, of course, a Q unsigned int 16. Oops, there we go. And this is going to be the sender port. Now, why do we need those? Well, when we do the next part, the read datagram, part of what it does is says, who is it from and where did it come from? You'll see what I mean here in a second. We'll say socket, read datagram, and now we need the buffer data. So it'll fill those bytes. And then it wants to know how big can you fill this. So we'll say buffer.size. And now it wants a variable to shove the host address into, so we're just going to say sender. And we want to know the port, so we'll say sender port. That way we can collect all this information right there. So we're going to just, you know, of course, do a queue debug. And we're going to say message from, and let's do this. And we're going to say uh, sender. We want to know the address. And let's just do a little copy and paste magic here just to make life a little easier on us. And we'll say message port. We want to know what port this thing came on. And there we go. Eh. Once again, I'm the victim of my gaming mouse. I love this mouse when I'm playing video games, but boy, does it make typing a pain sometimes. And we want to know the actual message that came in. So we're just going to throw the buffer back out here, just so we can see what's going on. Very, very simple class. When we call a constructor, we're just making a new socket, binding it to the address and port, and connecting our signals and slots. We have a function that sends out information, hello from UDP land and we're writing that datagram out to the socket. Um, we have ready read. This is uh, our slot that is called when uh, there is a pending datagram in the socket. 
and then we can just you know resize our buffer shove that data into the buffer and get the the address it came from and the port it came from so now in our main.cpp we can just say include my UDP and we're gonna make a client server here so we're just gonna say my UDP and we're gonna call this server and my UDP and we'll call this client and we're gonna say client say hello that's really all there is to it let's see if we can get a build and compile out of this no matching blah 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 what did I do wrong here hmm. well let me pause the video super quick and figure this one out uh, yes silly me it wants the address of these sorry about that there we go now we should get a clean compile out of this there we go now as you can see it says message from 127001 that's our local loopback message port whoa that's a big number where'd that come from well that is the port that the client is actually sending on remember we bound and listened to a specific port doesn't necessarily mean that's the port you're going to send on though. Hello from UDP land is our message. So that's our datagram in its entirety. So as you can see, there's really not a whole lot to UDP. It's pretty pretty simple protocol here. Um, you really just need to bind to an address and a port, listen for a datagram, and then process it when it comes in. So that's really all there is. So this is Brian. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial educational and entertaining. And if you got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and send them to me.